Hey, how you doing? Eric and Zilkow Cigars here. I uh, wanted to do a real quick video on the topic of a daily smoke. So what the hell is a daily smoke, you may be asking? To me and a lot of people that I'm hanging out with and smoking cigars with and riding with, um, to us a daily smoke is a cigar that is good enough to smoke on a daily basis but isn't too expensive. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, so what isn't a daily smoke? Well, a daily smoke is not, you know, maybe your, your Cubans you've, you know, a Cohiba you got from Cuba. Um, this isn't uh, Davidoff. This isn't uh, Atabay that you're paying 25 30 bucks for. Um, and and what this isn't is it's not the, hey, I got 40 cigars for 1995 off the internet, you know. So it's it's somewhere in the middle that makes it uh, a good a good smoke, but a reasonable price so that you're not breaking the bank and you're able to smoke these on a regular basis. Um, so for someone like me, who's a huge infused cigar fan, Drew Estate fan, um, the cigar that really fits the bill for a daily smoke for me is what we call the Isla del Sol. Um, and I've had this in other videos, because uh, I think this is such a really, you know, fantastic cigar, especially for the, the price. Um, if you go look around, you'll see that the prices are very similar to each other. But I will, I will tell you, because I normally don't plug any retailers at all, online or brick and mortar, but I will tell you that the best price I've ever seen for these, and I'm talking like $20 a box difference in price, is the Atlantic Cigar Company. On, and I get them online from there. Um, so maybe check those guys out and compare to other online retailers that maybe you normally use. And just to verify, but on a regular basis, though they sell them basically about twenty dollars less per box than anyone else. So that's you know I've turned a lot of people onto that, and like I said, I normally don't, you know, I don't get anything from anyone. I don't. There's no reason. <laughs> there's no advantage to me telling you to go a certain place. Um, but that website is where I found these, and I thought it was like a special deal or something, and I just realized that's their everyday price. So you're saving like twenty bucks a box. Um, but what is it about this cigar that makes it that price? Because if we're saying it's still a good cigar, but it's lower priced, what's the deal? There's got to be, what's the catch, right? <clears throat> so the catch is that this is what's called a mixed filler cigar. So what, what does that mean? Um, in other videos, we've kind of talked about the construction of cigars a little bit. Basically, there's three overall components that make up a cigar. The inside bulk of the tobacco of the cigar is the filler okay then there's a, a usually a combination of two kind of more robust sturdier leaves that they call a binder and that binder is what's wrapped around the filler to kind of get your general cigar shape going then they put them into a press that um, even forms that shape even you know tighter and and, and uh, gets it really down to what they want especially if it's a torpedo or a different kind of shape, it really molds it into the proper shape. So then you kind of put on the window dressing, which is the wrapper, which is the outside leaf that you see. Um, and that's really where you're determining a lot of times, you know, if you're saying, I want a Connecticut or a Sumatra or a Maduro, it's that outer wrapper that you're really noticing first to kind of maybe give you a hint of what the cigar is and maybe even what the strength of it is. Um, but the bottom line is there's there's really two kinds of filling on the cigar. There's what they call long leaf, which is basically they take full leaves of tobacco, they put them into a certain order, and then they roll them in a certain method, and then they put them on, they bind them, put them in the mold. Um, <clears throat> during that process, if you've ever watched it, a lot of trimming is going on. They usually have this kind of curved round, curved blade knife that they're trimming, and they're trimming and trimming and trimming around the, the edges. To, to make the leaves how they want them and they're pulling stems and things like that. So what ends up happening is they've got a lot of leftover pieces of tobacco that are little short pieces. Um, still the same high quality leaf that they're using to make the cigar in the first place, but now they're in little tiny shreds rather than a nice broad leaf. So what they could do, instead of throwing those away, is they can then make what they call a mixed filler cigar. So they can use less of the nice big leaves and they can fill it with some of the smaller stuff. So <clears throat> that's why you're basically saying this is a mixture of a long and a short fill. Does not do anything to detract from the flavor 
of, of this cigar and it it doesn't seem to um, affect the draw on these cigars I've never I've never had one of these not be a great smoke and a great draw they burn wonderfully um, so I think you know so where does it come in that people are, are, are so afraid of short filler well I'll tell you where it is if you've ever heard the term Cuban sandwich what that means is is a cigar typically that would be considered a fake Cuban. So, you know, you go to another country or even in the U.S. if you've got someone, you know, that maybe brought some back. And, oh, hey, man, I will give you, I can sell you this Cuban cigar that should be 35 bucks a piece. I'll sell it to you for 4 bucks. Well, probably be a little concerned that that's a fake cigar. And and so you might say, well, so what? So it's a fake cigar, whatever. It's 4 bucks. It's probably still fine. Okay, well, here's, here's where the problem comes in. When you have a Cuban sandwich cigar like that, what they're doing is they're actually taking that short filler, the extra trimming that we were talking about, but they're not doing it in a, a, a nice hygienic fashion. This is literally, and this is disgusting. If you want to go on, go on, uh, search for, on YouTube for um, fake Cubans and things like that, or Cuban sandwich, and you'll see that literally these some of these factories are sweeping up the the remnants of the cigar trimmings from the floor. So I've seen videos where the people have cut open cigars that are fakes, and there's literally, along with the short filler, um, there's stems, rodent hair, rat feces, fingernail clippings. Uh, hair from the employees, little pebbles, dirt that's coming in off people's shoes. Um, basically, they're just sweeping. Uh, picture sweeping your kitchen after Thanksgiving, and you take that little pile of whatever you swept up, and you put it into a cigar and you smoke it. That's what's kind of happening. So it's freaking disgusting. Um, I mean, to the point where you can actually probably get sick, depending on how bad that Cuban sandwich cigar was. Um, so that's that's kind of the big thing to know that when you're talking about short filler, it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, and that's why I've always said in all my videos and anyone I talk to, I always say buy a good cigar from a good company because you know Drew Estate is not doing this. So when they are selling a cigar like this that is a blend of short and long filler, first of all they're disclosing that ahead of time. There's no mystery that that's the case like a fake Cuban, for example, where they're trying to pass it off as a real Cuban, like a Cohiba, whatever, um, and they're trying to lead you to believe that it's a full, long, filler, high-quality cigar, and it's not. So it's it's all starting as a deception to begin with, but you know, when you're looking at a, a reputable company like Drew Estate or any other top cigar manufacturer that's using a blend of short and long filler, you know they're not trying to pull one over on you you know so so you don't have to worry about that it's not quality so just uh, i just want you to really understand that when you hear the term short filler some people are immediately like whoa, whoa, whoa i don't want anything to do with a short filler cigar really not the case because you can get an awesome cigar and save a lot of money by buying right into this whole mixed filler cigar idea which is fantastic so what i'm going to do for you is i brought two of these one is going to be smoked. One is going to be a sacrifice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these apart and show you what's on the inside. Um, I've actually never cut one of these open. Well, we're not going to cut it, but I'm going to um, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here because I'm going to cut one of these open, or at least undo it. And I'm also going to do that by cutting it wrong. I'm going to cut this thing too deep on purpose to kind of show you what we're always what I'm always talking about about how to cut the cigar properly. So let's start by opening this one. I know people always cringe when you're going to cut a cigar open. I know a lot of YouTubers, that's a really popular thing where they take cigars that people donate to them and cut them apart so that you can see what's on the inside. Because, like I said, when you're talking about the wrapper, you're always used to seeing this beautiful, nice, velvety cigar. and Oh, it's so awesome. You never really see what's on the inside. And uh, I've actually seen some videos where they cut open some really high-end cigars and they're filled with really thick veins from the leaves that should have been pulled out. So it's always kind of a surprise to see what's in these, but I will tell you these are these are good cigars, man. And oh my God, they smell good. Just smelling this thing is awesome. I, I feel bad even gonna to, to ruin one. <clears throat> I'm wondering if you can see it. 
Okay, yeah, a little bit. But like we talked about, you can see that on this cigar, the, actually the cap goes down pretty far. They really uh, rolled the cap down low on this one. But as you, as you may have seen in other videos, not mine, but other videos on cigar construction, you know, once they put this wrapper on, the last thing that they do is they cut a piece of uh, tobacco leaf in a certain pattern that they wrap around the top that becomes the cap. So typically you'll see like three different sort of delineation lines. And so I can see one up here and I can see one down here. So on this one I can, I can clearly see two lines. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one properly. And so I'm going to line this sucker up. I can see that I'm behind the line. It's kind of hard to see. And I'm going to snip it. Okay. So I did a little bit of a, a little bit on the on the angle there. Some people say that's a good thing to keep the the construction tight on the end of the cigar here, but I don't know. Let me try the draw. See, look at that, one. perfect. I mean, it's even kind of a small. I, I almost did a little bit smaller of a cut than I normally would have done. Um, so on these, they do have an end, um, a little wrapper, a little decorative thing. So go ahead and just peel that off. Easier said than done, apparently. Okay, discard that. All right, now we've got our good old regular cigar here. So what I'll do is go ahead, I'm gonna, because um, I'm gonna review this as well while I'm doing this, so I'm not just gonna destroy one, I might as well review, review it and let you know what I think as well. So, like we all know, by now, hopefully, if you've watched enough of my videos and other people's and gotten out there and done some smoking, gonna toast the foot. And again, like I don't, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but in the Boy Scouts, when my son was in the Boy Scouts and, and we were very involved in going out camping and doing all these different things, you'd actually make this thing called char cloth and you would basically heat up cotton sheeting and you would make it turn black like this. And then uh, when you used it to light a fire, this ignites very quickly. <clears throat> and that's sort of what's happening. And that's why we're toasting the foot is because you're, you're basically preloading this thing to light well and like i said you know you'll see it smokes a little bit here but um what it does is i'm making the entire bottom of it charred so that when i go to light it now it's going to light very quickly and again like i've mentioned when you how you light your cigar in the beginning kind of can set the tone so if you light this thing halfway and it starts to tunnel and burn the wrong direction it can be a problem so um you want to make sure to toast the foot that's kind of why we're doing it These are awesome, I'm telling you. So on these, um, I think these, I think these some these sort of fall if you're familiar with Drew Estates. I mean, I, I guess I should be wearing a Drew Estate shirt. I mean, I am always talking about them. Um, this almost to me, so they have a they have a series called uh, Natural. There's a whole Natural line where they're um, like the Natural Dirt Torpedo, which is a fantastic cigar. It has a pretty unique flavor as well, but it's a little more, uh, it's a little less infused, I guess you could say. It's on the very light end of it versus where you're going to like a Cuba Cuba or a deep dish, the blue label acids, um, very heavy on the um, infusing. These are somewhere in the middle. So what you commonly get from a Drew Estate cigar is on the wrapper they it's usually really sweet this one isn't as sweet it is sweet but not as sweet as as uh, you would expect but on the first hits it's very mild very mellow um, you could you can really taste the natural tobacco flavor coming through more than you do like let's say if you're smoking like a uh, Cuba Cuba um, where again the the oils that are infused are a lot heavier this one you're not getting that as much this year arguably for those that want to argue between natural cigars versus infused and which one's better and that whole debate this really lands somewhere somewhere in the middle it's kind of a, a nice uh, like a happy medium really So 
So not over not overly complex. You know, this is not one of those cigars where you're like, you know, I'm tasting this flavor and that flavor and all these different notes and I'm getting cedar and wood and nuts and spice and this isn't that complex. <clears throat> I guess the argument for it is it's really mellow. It's really consistent. It's got a beautiful draw, beautiful construction. The, it usually burns dead nuts. Perfect. Um, the price is right and the flavor is right. So I think when you're when you're looking to satisfy that daily smoke cigar, it just flips the bill perfectly. <clears throat> and again, like I've stated in other videos, a lot of times when we meet up on rides, you know, a few of us are getting maybe to the ride uh, destination or the starting point an hour or so earlier than the rest of the group because we're road captains so we're the ones usually getting there ahead of time to get things set up and make sure we're good going over the route making sure our radios are working because we communicate via like radios and earpieces um so a lot of us again are going to have that i might be smoking an isla del sol at 6 30 in the morning and a cigar that was maybe a little more robust or a maduro or something a little heavier a little oiler oilier um probably wouldn't go over as well so a cigar like this one, like especially if you've also had like the Tabac or some of the um, the Java series from True Estate, it's kind of in the line of those. This is like the perfect pairing um, for like a nice hot cup of like for me. And again, this is me. Um, like if I was gonna have a nice hot like vanilla latte in the morning, this cigar is creamy and 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 not complex and and just clean and it would just it's a perfect pairing for something like that just a, a perfect smoke that isn't overwhelming so again um if you're gonna have a something in the morning this is an ideal cigar another good thing about the cigar is is there's times where you might you know if you're like for example like for me sorry if it doesn't apply to you guys as well but for me it's just a great way to reference this stuff is being on a ride because that's what i, I do a lot of um you know, there might be a, we might have one of these in the morning and then we might stop somewhere for lunch and we have another cigar after lunch and then you're ending up at someone's house and you guys are sitting around a fire pit shooting the crap and, and smoking cigars. This is also kind of a good cigar to have a couple always in your herfador because it's so mellow and chill that after I've smoked a couple cigars, the thought of maybe having another big, really long, heavy Maduro cigar is just too overwhelming and I'm like, done but i can smoke another one of these so if i still want to sit around and have a cigar because i'm you know really kind of enjoying the social side of it like we, i've talked about <clears throat> this is a, a good cigar that that you could use for that reason is to finish off maybe the, the evening and on the, a little lighter of a note and you can maybe squeeze in that that one more cigar for the day um, without it being a little overwhelming so Okay, well that being said, I'm going to set this little guy aside here, and what we're going to do is what I normally hate to do. I'm going to ruin this cigar, but let's check it out. And again, I would not be doing this to a Cohiba from Cuba. A lot of people do, um, especially on a lot of YouTube channels where they do this specifically. I'm not going to. But because we're talking about this cigar being so reasonably priced, Nah, I don't feel so bad hacking one apart so we can take a look inside this thing. So, let's do what we did before. We're going to go ahead and take this little uh, ring off the end here. Pops that. On this one, now I'm going to take this, uh, band, this band off. Okay. So, we are down to a very nice cigar. And I'm telling you, you know, when you're looking at cigars and you're looking at the end here, I don't know how well you can see it. That's a good cigar, man. I'm telling you. You know, it's rolled well. Um... If you're looking at this for veins and things, you know, a lot of times you'll see these huge veins sticking up. And they're really because they didn't peel off, peel out like one of those really heavy stems that they should have really caught and taken out. Um, without the bands on the thing, and if you just inspected the cigar, man, this is a, this is a really good cigar. Um, again, that's what I'm saying. For the price and stuff, you, you just can't go wrong. Um... So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do what I tell you to not do. I'm going to go well past that cap because I can see that they, they rolled this cap down pretty far. It's way down here. So I'm going to purposely go way past that cap. 
and I'm going to hack this sucker. Okay. So by 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 doing what I just did, and what I tell you guys not to do, is I've I've gone way past the cap on this cigar. So the cap is way up here, and so what I've done now is I've I've taken away the ability for this cigar to stay wrapped. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start squeezing it a little bit, and that's how you can usually get these things to pop apart. So you'll start seeing the leaf come apart here. I'm just trying to find a place I can start to peel this thing back, and it looks like it's right up here. Okay, so here we go. So, so one thing I'll note on this is that um, this wrapper, see how nice that is? Um, oh, it smells so good too. So this is the outer wrapper. Okay, so for those of you who have never gotten to see this before, I always find this kind of interesting. So this is the outer wrapper. You can see it's pretty thin. Um, and a lot, so a lot of times what you'll do is when you have a cigar like this is you'll kind of, kind of a tensile strength test. Okay, so for a, a less expensive cigar, to be honest with you, it's not bad. I mean, it, it appears to be pretty thin because, you know, these the um, wrappers are always thin um, for the most part. But I'm telling you, for this cigar just never ceases, ceases to uh, amaze me because for being what it is and for being at the price point it is, it's really well made. And so that wrapper is a beautiful wrapper. It is, um, it's a little thin but the tensile strength on it's really good. Um, it didn't just tear apart like tissue paper because I've, I've literally had cigars where I dropped them on the ground from a sitting position. They only fell maybe two and a half feet and the outside wrapper cracked because it was just tissue thin. So, so the next thing you're looking at here is this is how the cigar looks without the wrapper. So this would be stage two. So what you're seeing here is what they call the binder. Okay, so this binder is what holds the filler together. So again, we're going to start twisting this a little bit so we can try to see where we can find a good place to start to peel the sucker apart. So yeah, you can see it starting to crack. And that, what that is, is the, uh, see the short, some of the short fillers are already coming out. So that's what we're, that's kind of what we're looking for here. Um, let's see, let me get to a good spot where I can start peeling this thing apart. Let's see if I can't get that binder to come apart. Usually if you twist it, it'll, it'll kind of pop open, but this one's kind of tight. Okay, well, here we go. Kind of going against the grain here, but we'll go ahead and just peel this thing off. So what, one thing I'll say about the binder on this cigar is the binder is a little bit probably thinner than I would expect it to be. And this is not really coming apart like I was hoping, but here we go. We can sort of see it. Here we go. Okay, so here's, here's the binder. Okay, so this is part of the binder. So this is Let's see if I can just get one piece to show you. So you can see it's usually not the better leaves. Um, like this one has a hole in it, which is fine because it's just the binder. Um, but you'll notice the tensile strength on this one is a lot tougher than that one. I mean, I gotta really kind of pop it to pull this apart. And you'll see that there's still like some some stems in it. Um, that's not that's not. On, you know, that's, it's fairly typical when you're talking about the binder, because the binder really what it, what you want out of the binder is um, is some of the strength to hold the the filler together. That's why the um, the wrapper, the outer leaf, can be a little more delicate because the binder is really taking the heavy lifting um, for holding holding the filler together. Good. All right. So we'll put that aside. Now, what we're going to look at, this is the filler. Okay, so this is the, the inside of the cigar. This is the middle. So again, what we're going to do is, so when I start to pull this apart, you can see that these leaves on the outside are long. So that's considered the long filler part. But if you look, I'm going to do this with my hand here. See all the little, little tiny pieces? to do this because usually you do this aiming down at the table but I think it's just I didn't want to do that um, so see how all that is short filler okay surrounded by long filler so what you ended up with you almost end up with this almost looks like a handful of to, uh, like pipe tobacco let's see if I can get a little better shot here see so this is 
this is the short filler okay so all it is is it's basically what sort of looks like a, a ground up cigar leaf um, you can see you know it's very just pieces okay compared to like you know the long binder or the, the outer this was actually not the binder this is the filler part so this was like the long filler so you can see the long filler is full piece of tobacco and again you can see this is not high quality when it comes to this would never make it as a wrapper it's full of holes um, but for the filler what you're really looking for on the filler is not so much the how pretty the leaf is it's the flavoring see this thing smells amazing this this smells like like pipe tobacco you know, aromatic and uh, I mean just you want to freaking eat it it smells so good um, but so when you're looking at the short filler what that is is it's just little pieces of that so it's not you know so in other words don't ever mis mistake that this this stuff just because it's the shavings it doesn't mean that it's it's poor quality it just means that it's the leftover trimmings from the full leaves that's really the only difference so <clears throat> the reason that the cigar can drop in price is because a lot of times this this filler part this stuff would have been thrown away in the trash can but what they're able to do is salvage that and you know there's even some good sized pieces in there I mean these are not it's not like it's all completely tiny little pieces there's decent little sizes in there nothing amazing but again this is all stuff that they trimmed away and so just instead of throwing it in the trash can why not pull off making another cigar out of it and selling it that's kind of what happened you know they realized that we don't have to just dump these in the trash we can uh we can still utilize this make some money save the consumer some money and it's kind of like a everybody wins you know the manufacturer wins and we win so anyway i hope they hopefully that was kind of interesting for you to be able to see <clears throat> that that uh, that's kind of how this is constructed um, when you're talking about a mixed filler so as you saw really what it was was primarily the the um, shredded pieces wrapped with the long filler where uh, a cigar that was all long filler would have just been all leaves like this that were rolled in a certain pattern um, so anyway hopefully that was a little bit interesting to see um, and again, one thing you, you're not seeing in this is you're not seeing hair or little pebbles because I'm, I'm looking through it right now. I mean, you're not seeing anything weird. I don't see pebbles. I don't see rat poops. I don't see hair. I don't see bits of dirt. I don't see anything weird. I just see just sh pieces of tobacco that would have gone in the trash. So I think it's I think it's a win-win. You know, if I'm a business owner and I'm salvaging some of the stuff to make more cigars to sell, hell yeah. And if I'm the consumer and I can get a really good cigar with really good tobacco and it just happens to be short filler, hell yeah. Everybody wins. <clears throat> the only time you're not winning is when someone's trying to cheat you and they're trying to mislead you and they're trying to make you believe that this is something that it's not. Okay, That's when you're losing. So um, let me hit this a few more times. Uh-oh. Looks like I talked too much, which I tend to do. Sorry about that. I, I do talk a lot, and I know that. <laughs> so, yeah, and if I hadn't just been chatting so much about this, this normally doesn't go out very often. This is, this is, uh, this cigar is only kind of screwing up now because of me, but um, when you're normally just smoking one of these things, man, it just smokes great. It keeps lit. Um, obviously, I just let it sit too long, but, you know, I'm not going to do, uh, not really going to do a full review where I, you're going to, I'm going to come back and back and back and have you watch this at different levels of uh, doneness. To be honest with you, these don't change much. Um, they're very, like I said, they're they're very simple. No, they're they're kind of a one trick pony. So to the cigar aficionado, that's a detractor. They're going to say, "Well, man, this thing's kind of 
pretty plain and basic. Um, and that's fine. Uh, if you're looking for complexities and you're looking for it to start and finish and do all these different things on the way, yeah, this is not the cigar. But we're not talking about that kind of cigar. That's a different thing. This is a daily smoke. This is a what can I smoke on a regular basis that's reasonably priced, that's a really good cigar, and it's, it's, it's arguably I, I want it to be like it is. I want this to be a one-trick pony. I want this to be pretty mellow. I want it to be creamy. I don't want it to be overbearing. I don't want it to be overpowering. I want to be able to smoke a couple of these in a day. I want this to, to be the morning cigar and the, the finishing cigar and maybe a really good cigar in the middle. You know, on those days where I'm going to smoke a little heavier than I normally would. Um, no bad taste in my mouth. I mean, so I, I would say, what's my overall review of uh, Isla del Sol for Drew Estate? It's a fantastic cigar at a fantastic price. Um, but like I've said in a lot of other videos, it's all about knowing what you're getting yourself into. You already know this is a short filler, long filler mix. This is not a long filler cigar. And if you look on most websites or if you talk to your brick and mortar guy, they'll tell you. The cigars tell you if it's a long filler or not. You know, if it doesn't say long filler, it's probably a mixture. Um, because typically if it's a long filler cigar, they're going to they're gonna say long filler because it's, you know, they're boasting about the fact that it's a long filler. Arguably so, why not? Um... But if you just know ahead of time that, that this is what it is, you'll love it. So I would say if you are an infused guy or a girl, give this sucker a go. You'll be happy you did because you're going to get some really cool flavors. You're going to get a really inexpensive cigar. Um, and if you are a uh, traditional cigar person, eh, this is on the lighter side of infused, so maybe give this one a go. This might be one you can sneak into your, your rotation that will uh, surprise you. This thing's, this thing's a little bit of a sleeper. Um, I think price-wise, and the first time I was introduced to these things, I'm like thinking, ah, eh, what's this is the Del Sol thing? And then I had one, I was like, oh, wow. I'm going to order a freaking box of these. And before you know it, this is one of those cigars that my humidor always has stocked up. Always. Because when I put together, in fact, I think the last video I did, I ran through a little list of what I typically throw in my herfador at the last minute to go ride. Is the Del Sol is usually one or two of those five cigars, because a, I'm probably I know I'm going to smoke one in the morning, and b, I'm probably going to loan one out or give one away because someone's going to have forgotten their cigars, and I'll say, "What do you want?" And they're like, "Oh, I'll take the Isla." I'm telling you, it's a good cigar. You'll be surprised. So anyway, um, sorry this ended up longer than I thought, but I figured I might as well you know, review this, tear one apart, show you how to cut it wrong. I figured I might as well kill a few birds with one stone with this video. So um, I'll try to keep it shorter in the in the future, but um, kind of want to get all that in. Anyway, Eric at SoCal Cigars, like, subscribe, make comments. Um, go, go try one of these. You'll thank me. We'll talk to you later. See ya.